To quote Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. And aside from being one of my all-time favorite comic book cliches, it's also an apt metaphor for your cybersecurity tools. So today we're gonna to talk about how to ensure that your security tools don't inadvertently do you more harm than good. With cyber attacks so frequent and common, most enterprises use multiple security tools to protect their network and applications as a whole. Security analysts recommend that you deploy certain security solutions in line so that they can inspect traffic before packets enter or leave your internal network. Now, inline monitoring like this does introduce a slight latency into your network response time while the inspection takes place. But the ability to stop threats at the network edge is more than worth that time investment. But what if one of your inline tools goes offline and causes your network to go down completely? Well, when it comes to your network and the applications you rely on, downtime is simply unacceptable. It deprives your staff of business critical systems while infuriating your end users and customers alike, essentially grinding your business to a screeching halt. But therein lies the problem. With your tools deployed in line, if any one of them stops responding and forwarding traffic, then it's going to disrupt that entire network segment. To keep this from happening, you need a bypass switch in place to continually verify that each of your inline tools is up and responding. If the bypass switch cannot confirm that your tool is working, then it fails open and allows traffic to flow through the tool and into the network anyways. This prevents network downtime while you troubleshoot your tools. Now, many security tools today come with an internal bypass switch that performs this exact same function. Tool vendors sometimes refer to these things as failsafe. But while that two-in-one functionality sounds really nice and all, they're not quite as fail-safe as they may initially seem. If the tool loses power or needs to be taken out of service for maintenance, the internal bypass switch is no longer available and doesn't forward traffic, which undermines its initial fail-safe claim. With an internal bypass switch, your only option is to wait for a scheduled downtime window to perform scheduled tool maintenance. Now, a better solution is to use an external bypass switch, which sits in front of your inline security tools. This enables you to separate control of the tool from control of your live network. With an external bypass, if you take an inline tool offline, the external bypass keeps traffic moving. This is particularly helpful when you need to proactively take the tool offline for troubleshooting or for things like upgrades. But it's worth bearing in mind that not all bypass switches are created equal. So when you're evaluating external bypass switches, be sure to look for modular designs with a flexibility to support multiple network segments. Also be sure to look for switches that can be configured to forward traffic from a downlink to a backup tool on an alternate link. Lastly, consider bypasses that can support tools operating in an active-active mode, like the, shameless plug, Ixia I bypass switch. In this mode, the backup tool is online and shares the processing load with your primary tool instead of sitting idle, where it would have to take a lot of time to boot up and take over in the event of a power failure. This means that there's virtually zero delay when one bypass stops and the other one has to take over. So there you have it, a little switch with big consequences. And hopefully I've been able to whet your appetite to learn just a little bit more. So if you're interested on more information on bypass options and features, be sure to check out our solution brief entitled Improved Network Reliability with External Bypass Switches. And until next time, this is Packet Boy, signing off.